you. And also with you. Let us worship God. Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this time of worship. It is good to see all of you here on this beautiful Lord's Day. I call your attention to the uh, insert in your bulletins, choir practice Tuesday, Bible study next week, food bank today, the table is covered. Blanket B, that's on Thursday. Thursday. I couldn't get that fast in my head calendar. Um, and a picnic on the 21st. That's going to be lots of fun. And there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Happy birthday to Don. Um, coming up on next Sunday. I did get that one in my head calendar. Are there others? Marge. <laughs> How did you know? Uh, first of all, I want to thank Pat Shaw for mentioning the blanket ministry, blanket B on Thursday from 10 till 2. If you can only come for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, it's a lot of fun. And it's, it's really give our blanket ministry a boost. And you can multitask. You can talk and laugh and talk and talk.
You're sure? <laughs> no. <laughs> I also want to say we had a wonderful uh, dedication of the fire station on Thursday morning. It was a beautiful day and lots of uh, people turned out um, for that great day. Um, great morning. <laughs> they even fed us an early lunch. That was quite a surprise. Um, but there was the firefighters and the EMS guys and the, and the law and all of the dignitaries were there, and me too. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all. It was quite a privilege. Please stand in body or spirit for the call to worship. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims his handiwork. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet it goes out through all the earth. And to the end of the world. We'll now sing hymn 611, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. yet we so often fail to live up to them. Like your people of old, we often desire to fashion you in our image or in ways that we can control. Knowing these failings of ours as you do, you still invite us to share your life of grace and abundant love by being united with Christ through the power of your Spirit. We do not deserve such gifts. We can only receive them and respond because Jesus intercedes for us in our weakness. May this time of worship and our daily living proclaim our thanksgiving for these undeserved and lavish gifts of grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Whether you feel like you have a grasp on who you are, or whether, or you're questioning your 
identity, whether you're a new to this type of prayer or whether you've confessed a thousand times before, whether you feel confident in the flesh, or whether you know your shortcomings all too well, God meets us where we are. And God invites us into this prayer. Won't you take a moment and read through the prayer that's printed in your bulletin, and then we'll pray it together. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that our confidence is often misplaced. We put our confidence in our abilities rather than in your love. We put our confidence in our belongings rather than in your generosity. We put our confidence in ourselves rather than in you. Forgive our misgivings. Redirect us according to your spirit and your will. Help us to follow your ways and find our freedom in your heavenly calling. Open us to new levels of trust and joy as we press on towards your goal. Amen.
that is the center of worship. As we come now to our time of prayer, I call your attention to the names on the prayer list. Marge has already told us about Kenny and Wanda um, and Idona. Are there others we need to include in our prayer this morning, Ralph? People of Israel and the Palestinians. Palestinians. This will be a bad time for a long time of oppression. Yes, you're right about that. Now I see you. Okay, good. Um, you all can take me off the prayer list because you all have done an amazing job with me, and I really appreciate it. I'm almost I'm feeling like I did almost before the thing hit. And so next month will be a year since God. I had it oh. happen. So really, I've started feeling like myself, honestly, at the end of August and in September. So wow. I'm not like maybe I was exactly. My legs are a little bit weird, but they're definitely much, much, much better. So I can run now, and I just feel so much better. Tell me that's great. Uh, I'm so glad to hear. Gordon. Fantastic. I'd like to say thanks for all the prayers and keep them coming because I can walk now, but I'd like to be able to run with Tony back there. <laughs> <laughs> Then in the time before my prayer, won't you lift these names and the ones that are on your heart that are known only to you and God and keep these all in your prayers as you go through your week. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, you speak to us from smoky mountains and from thunderous lightning. You speak to us through the sounds of whispers and the sounds of the trumpets. You speak to us from the proclamations of the firmament and from the drippings of honeycomb. You speak to us, and we listen, holy God. So we humbly ask you once again to speak to us now, for we are ready. As we witness your presence in this world, we stand in awe. For your gracious acts of compassion, we are grateful. For your providential provision of needs, we say thanks. For those labors of love happening all around us in which we see your spirit shining, we smile and bask in your glory. But for those places in which we see hurt, we ask for your healing. For those places in which we see unfairness, we ask for your justice. For those places in which we see pain or loss or distress, we ask for your restoration. For those places in which we see wrongdoings, we ask 
for what you see as right to begin right away. We ask for these things because we see them and we know that you see them too. We also know you see more than we can ever begin to imagine. So we pray for your pervasive presence to permeate there as well. Send us out as your people to follow your commands, to show a better way to live together in community and to promote human flourishing in this world for everybody. Open our eyes to see what you see and open our hearts to participate in what your spirit is already busy with. May we be bold in our discipleship as we leave here today. And may we be bold in praying the prayer you've taught all your disciples before we go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we come to the time to hear scripture read and thoughts proclaimed, let us always remember that we are part of the story. of those who hate me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall work, labor, and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant or his ox or his ass, or anything that is your neighbor's. Now when all the people 
perceive the thunderings and the lightnings and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. And they stood far off and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will hear, but let not God speak to us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to prove you and that the fear of him may be before your eyes that you may not sin. Amen. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This is a true story because you can't make stuff like this up. It happened in Charlotte, North Carolina. A man bought a box of very expensive cigars. He protected his investment by taking out an insurance policy on the cigars. He insured them against decay, spoilage, theft, and fire. In the next few weeks, he proceeded to smoke all of the cigars in the box and then he filed a claim with his insurance company stating that the cigars were lost in a series of small fires. <laughs> of course, the insurance company rejected the claim, which ended up in civil court. Even though the man admitted to smoking the cigars, he won the case because the company declared the cigars insurable property and did insure them against fire. And the company failed to specify what sort of fire was excluded, therefore the claim is legitimate. The man collected $15,000. As he was leaving the courthouse, he was arrested and charged with 24 counts of arson. <laughs> After all, he had confessed to setting the series of small fires, which had caused his loss of property. He was convicted and sentenced to 24 months in jail and was fined $24,000. <laughs> You can't make that stuff up. <laughs> Ever since God handed Moses the Ten Commandments on top of the mountain, there has been a debate concerning the letter and the spirit of the law. Both our text and my little cigar story point out the danger of following the letter of the law while violating its intent. We Christians tend to forget that the law was given to the children of Israel as a gift, not as a burden. Thomas Cahill in his wonderful book, The Gift of the Jews, reminds us of that fact. He says, in the prescriptions of Jewish law, we cannot but note a presumption that all people, even slaves, are human and that all human lives are sacred. The constant bias is in favor not of the powerful and their possessions, but of the powerless and their poverty. This was something new, something unheard of in the ancient world, something that had not been seen in other religions or other codes of law. Jewish law was a gift to the Jews and to the world, a gift to remind us that our lives are sacred and so are the lives of everyone else. The problem that 
Jesus confronts with all the law-abiding, rule-following Pharisees, Sadducees, and Levites time after time was that they chose to obey the rules without remembering the relationships that lie beneath the rules. If we're honest, We'll admit that this is sometimes true of us as well, as well. We make religious rules that are intended to help us live together as godly people. Over time, we forget that the rules are there to help us, not to hurt us in our relationships with each other in the community of Christ. A while back, a friend of mine visited the Car Collectors Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. He said there used to be a 1918 Dodge Touring Car on display there. In its little placard, it told an interesting story. In 1918, the father of Albert Hilliard bought the car for $785. In 1921, Albert and his brother got into an argument about who got to drove, drive the car into town on Saturday night. The father drove the car into the garage and shut the door. There the car remained until it was found 38 years later, covered with dirt and chicken manure, with only 1,800 miles on the odometer. I thought about Mr. Hilliard and his Dodge Touring car. He attempted to heal the breach between his children by making a rule when what was needed was reconciliation. He said, okay, neither one of you gets to drive it, but I'm willing to bet that the boys just went on to argue about something else, and then about something else, and then about something else. The car wasn't the problem. The problem was jealousy and strife that lived in the family and in those brothers' hearts. So it is with us. Since our problem lies within our hearts, the healing must also start there. Jesus calls us to understand it's not about the rules, it's about the relationships, the relationships between us and God, and the relationships between us and each other. Along these lines, St. Augustine said that there is a hole in our hearts that God can only fill, that our hearts are restless until they rest in God. No amount of rules and regulations and guidelines can change our hearts. Only God can do that. Only God's Spirit can move us that way. Only the cross of Christ, only the broken body and spilt blood of Jesus can break our hearts enough that we will let the love of God flow in to change and reshape us. When my children were growing up, one of the times of day I looked forward to the most was when Sesame Street came on in the afternoon. The school kids were home and even they, even though they would never admit it, would be sort of watching it from the kitchen table while they did their homework. A couple of years ago, 
HBO made a documentary on the making of Sesame Street. Someone asked the producer about the reaction of the child actors to working with the Muppets, who are, after all, puppets, with a human being crouched on the floor holding them up with one arm. The producer said the kids don't pay any attention to the humans. They just talk to the Muppets. In fact, he said there was one child who saw Big Bird take off his top part and then an actor step out. The child stared and then yelled to his mother, Mom! Mom, do you think Big Bird knows he has a man inside? <laughs> <laughs> the goal of the law is to remind us that we have a human being inside, in our hearts, in our souls, in our center of being in the part of us that makes us something other than a thinking animal. The law also reminds us that other people have that hidden humanity, that heart, soul, and mind, that center that belongs to God as well. Our calling is to remember that broken sinner in our dealings with each other. It is our calling to remember that we are called to transcend the rules in the name of love. It is our calling to remember that not only did Jesus die for us, but Jesus died for everybody so that we could all be reconciled to God and to one another. It is our calling to spread this gracious good news throughout the world, beginning with our own hearts. And the people said, Amen. Amen. And now would you stand with me in body or spirit? And let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life God is generous beyond measure. With thanksgiving for God's generosity in our lives, let us be generous as we offer ourselves and our resources in response to God's word given to us today. Let us pray. Sweet Savior, your word is greater to us than gold, even great gold. May these gifts brought today be a gesture of our gratitude for the riches of your word given to us. Multiply these gifts and make them like the drippings of the honeycomb to those in need. Amen. Thank you.
number 80, You Shall Go Out With Joy. We haven't sung it in a while. So Lanny's going to play it all the way through once. Then we're going to sing it all the way through twice. And then just pay attention. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 